Would you turn to your Bible to Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42? Luke, Luke 10, 38. And we, we're in this series called Interruption or Invitation. And we've been exploring different invitations from Jesus where he invites you to come and be with him. He said, come to me. If you're weary and heavy laden, come to me. Learn from me. I will give you rest. Come and be my apprentice. And Jesus is invited, inviting us to do these things. And sometimes we think, oh, one more thing to do is a burden. It, it's an interruption, but really it's an invitation to come and be with Jesus. So I want to ask you, just do a quick checkup with me. If you're online or in the room, it doesn't matter. Do a quick checkup right now. Are you making progress? Are you moving forward in your spiritual journey with Jesus? Or... If truth be told, are you living off of someone else's spirituality? In other words, do you just count on someone else to read the Bible for you and tell you what it is, uh, what it says? Do you you expect someone else just to pray for you? Uh, Or are you getting in there and praying? Are you getting in there and, and spending time with Jesus? Is your life scattered or is your life centered? Is your spirituality more like the last drink in a warm canteen Or is your spiritual life more like a bottomless strawberry lemonade from Red Robin? It just keeps flowing, keeps refreshing, and you keep licking that little sugar ring across the top. Mm, My, my, that is what God has for you. That is his desire for you. Jesus said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. It says that in John chapter 10, verse 10. And so we've been talking in this series about how you find Jesus in community. And that's why we're so excited, why I love our connect groups. I'm in two different connect groups this season because I want to find Jesus. I want to find him more and more and more in my life. So I'm in a men's group and I'm in a mixed group. And I look forward to being with them. Uh, one, one of our guys has been missing for a while because of some, some situations uh, going on in the family and stuff. And he was here today. We got to see him. It's so great. We've been praying for him. That's community. That, and and it, it happens because I made that extra step to say, okay, I'll be in a group. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put myself out there. And when I do... I find Jesus in community. That, that is, it's so great. We, we've learned about in this series how worshiping gives you heavenly perspective. Worship gives you heavenly perspective. It's not just like, oh, I got to go to church. It's not like that. It's like I get to go and I get to have my, my eyes and my heart out of the, the drudgery of, of the earth. And I get to see the glory of heaven for a few minutes as I worship. Because you have heavenly perspective. When, we talked about how when you purposefully give to God's work, God blesses you. We, we talked about God's ultimate purpose for prayer is friendship. So prayer is not like, you know, oh, it's an interruption in my day. I got to, got to have a good life, so I got to work hard. That's, it's not like that. Prayer is an invitation to be a friend of Jesus. Amen. And that's what we're talking about in this series. And so today I want to talk to you about hanging on Jesus' every word. Hanging on Jesus' every word. Let's go to Luke chapter 10, 38. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem... They came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And that that phrase there, uh, the root word of it talks about accepting the presence of a person with friendliness. So Martha accepted Jesus' presence with friendliness. It's to welcome, to receive, to accept, to have as a guest. So it is very possible Martha did not invite Jesus to her house. It is very possible that Jesus came to town and he said, hey, Martha, could I hang out at your house for a while? And she welcomed him into her home. Kind of gives you a little different perspective if you've heard this story before. So we know from various passages, various parts of the Bible, that Jesus and Mary and Martha were friends. So he gets to her town and he goes, Hey, could I hang out at your house for a while? Verse 39. Her sister, Martha's sister, Mary, sat at the Lord's feet listening. That means she was hearing with intention. 
She was listening to what he taught. Somebody say taught. And I love the, the message uh, paraphrase of the Bible about this verse says, Mary was hanging on every word he said. That's where I got the title, hanging on every word he said. Now, it sounds like Mary was not alone. Again, I've, just, I've been thinking about this passage in a different way than I've seen before. She, it, the Bible doesn't say she was sitting, chilling with Jesus, having a convo, conversation. That's not what it says. She was sitting at his feet, listening to what he taught. So I'm picturing a group of people in a house, in a living room. Mary, uh, the couch was taken. So she sits at his feet, and she's listening to what he taught. Um, all of every, everybody there was listening to God's word as Jesus spoke it. Verse 40. But Martha was distracted, and that word means pulled away. She was pulled away from Jesus by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here? And again, that, it's not like she's just doing nothing. It's that she, it's just my sister, so it's just, it's just my sister when instead of uh, helping me, she's just sitting here and she's listening to you while I do all the work. And that work, the root word here of this, uh, when she says I do all the work, the, is the same word we get the word deacon from. It's a servant of the church, deacon or board member. She says, while well, I do all the deaconing, tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, listen to what he says, my dear Martha. You know, tone of voice makes a big difference. Why not that tone of voice? My dear Martha, it's like his eyes are saying, I love you so much. You are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about or needed. Mary has discovered it or chosen it. And it will not be taken away from her. Wow. One of the things this reminds me about is that Jesus had a healthy rhythm of life. We see uh, in the various uh, biographies of Jesus in the Bible, we see that Jesus loved to get away all by himself in a place where no one else was around. Uh, the Bible calls it a deserted place. He'll, he would go out by himself and just pray alone. Then he would minister and serve the huge crowds. We talked about recently how he fed 5,000 people from one little boy's lunch. But then he also hung out in connect groups. And he had a, 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 he had a couple of, of a different connect groups, just like me. He had a group of three. He had a group of 12. And then here he is at his friend's house in their living room for connect group time. And Jesus is just teaching them. So... I want to just kind of defend Martha here a little bit. She was not wrong to make a big dinner, but I would say her rhythm was off. Her rhythm was off. She was serving when she's supposed to be soaking. Serving is good. Jesus said, I came to serve. Serving is good, but there are times for soaking. Maybe if Martha would have asked Jesus, so Jesus, I, this is the way I picture it. Reading between the lines, Jesus says, hey, could I come hang out at your house? If, if Martha would have just said, come on in, should I make a big dinner? You know, I can, I'm pretty good at that. You know, I can do it. I, I bet Jesus would have said, not right now. Right now, I'm just going to ask you just to come and be with me. I've got some things I want to impart. I want you to hear my words. And then a little bit later, we'll just get everyone in the house and we'll pitch in together. We'll make a dinner. I believe that's what Jesus would have said because that was the rhythm that was needed at that time. I don't know exactly what's going on in every one of your lives, but I don't have to be a prophet to say, I bet you're experiencing some stress right now. If you're in the room and you have a mask on, which everyone here does, you're experiencing some mask stress, right? At the minimum, at the minimum. But our lives are disrupted. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, back in March, we were told we just need two weeks. We just need two weeks to flatten that curve. 
Well, the curve's flat. The death curve is flat. And we're still at it seven months later. That, that is stressful. So I, that's why I could say, I bet you're experiencing some stress right now. There is way too much to do. And it just got intensified when school started. Uh, you, you, could, you could whip yourself into a frenzy just trying to get everything done that has to be done. You're feeding the family, homeschooling the kids, while simultaneously mowing the yard, homeschooling the kids, working from home yourself, taking care of your parents, serving at church. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. As a church, I don't know if you get the season we're in. We are in a 50-year anomaly. Only once in 50 years has the season we're in right now happened. So that's why we're working extra hard. I mean, this, this is not normal that we have a moving sale even. This is, a, this, is a, this is a time, this is just a unique time in history. But the good news is, Jesus wants to help you through all that. He wants to help you with all that. You don't have to walk through it alone. You don't have to carry all the stress and all the weight on your own back. And when you listen first at Jesus' feet by reading the Bible for yourself, you find the wisdom and the strength that you need to face each day. So you could say, I don't have time to read the Bible. I got a lot to do. Or you could say, the most important thing I could do is spend time with Jesus. I like to actually rephrase that, invest time with Jesus. That's the most important thing I can do. Pray, read the Bible, giving, serving, all those things that we do. That's how you find the reserve to be able to handle the crazy season. Right, this, this, it, it is a time when we need Jesus, Jesus more than ever. And so if I could just summarize this message just in one little phrase, it's this. The Bible is your roadmap to a thriving life. The Bible is your roadmap to a thriving life. I, I watched a hilarious TEDx talk here uh, this last week. I don't even know what drew me to it. Uh, well, maybe. I guess it's in the category of happiness. Um, so <laughs> it, was a, it was on happiness and work. And uh, so I was drawn to this TEDx talk. I don't know why. And uh, just because we're in a 50-year, you know, working harder than ever in the last 50 years moment. Maybe, maybe that's why. But it was by Sean Acor. And it was, it was about work and happiness. And the common assumption, at least in our country, is that if you work really hard, then you will be really successful. Then you will be really happy. But here's a speaker who has done all this research, and, he's, and he's, he's pointing out that research does not support that. In fact, it's the opposite. So if you actually get happy now, then you will be more productive. Then you will be successful. So happiness does not depend on success. Happiness depends on something else. Well, happiness, my contention, is that it, happiness comes from being grounded in God's word, the Bible, and living out its principles. You want to have a happy life, live godly. How do you know how to live godly? His word. That's what tells us. Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3 says this. Oh, the joys. Somebody say, oh, the joys. Isn't that just a great Bible phrase? Oh, the joys. Of those blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, highly favored people. All the joys of those people who do not follow the advice of the wicked. I'm going to skip down to verse 2. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. The happy, blessed, most favored people are the ones who meditate on God's word day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank. Bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. I don't know if you've ever gotten up off the earth. You've ever gone in a hot air balloon or you've gone in a, a plane and you're looking down at the earth and you go over a big old brown patch. Like maybe it's a more kind of an arid, dry, deserty kind of place. 
you can tell where the river is. Because wherever the river is, there are trees planted along it. And trees are thriving there because they put their roots deep down in. And it doesn't matter what's going on around them, but they are thriving because they are planted there. And God's word says, that is you, my friend. That is me. That is you. When you get grounded and planted and meditate in God's word, you will thrive like a tree on a riverbank in a dry place. That's awesome. I love that. And so he describes how we are when we're meditating on God's word and we're, we don't take advice of the wicked, but we take God's advice for our lives. It makes you blessed and happy. It makes you planted and strong. It, it makes you fruitful and never fainting. It's worth it. It makes you prosperous. We've got some resources for you. If you're here in the room, uh, or if you could stop by during the week, we have complimentary journals, NFC journal for you in, in the lobby. And you can pick one up on your way out today if you don't already have one. And inside is a Bible reading plan. It's also on the app. It's on the website. Anywhere you look, we've got a Bible reading plan. It's just a suggested uh, chapter a day. So you could look at that and think, oh, it's one more thing I got to do. But instead, look at it like, I want to thrive. I want to be prosperous. I want to be fully blessed and fully favored by God. It's worth it. I'm going to start there. I'm going to do this. You know, I have a personal little rule I have made for myself a few years back. And actually, I guess it's more than a few because it started when I was in college. In college, okay, I was in more than a few years ago. In college, you show up on day one, you buy all your books, and literally you would have a, a stack of textbooks that all have to be read it is just overwhelming. And I realized a few weeks in, oh my goodness, I, I would think, oh, I got to get all my reading done, and then I'll do devotions. The reading was never done. Never. It was never done. And so I made a decision. Okay, God's word is more important to me than those textbooks. It's more important than newspaper. It's more important than Facebook. It's more important than anything else I read. So I made a decision back then. I read the Bible first before I read anything else. And it's amazing how when you take that 10 minutes and read the Bible first, you do have time. Everything else will get read. It will be fine. Don't worry about it. And so many times we say, I don't have time to read the Bible, but we had time for 30 minutes of Facebook. And we just don't even realize it. You do have time to read the Bible if you do it first. And then you prosper and then you're favored. So listen, don't think of your Bible reading plan like a jury summons. You know what a jury summons is? You know, it, it, there is a certain uh, cool appeal, and we, you know, we want to serve our country and everything, but you get an unexpected letter in the mail, and it just says, drop everything you're doing, cancel all your appointments, don't go to work, and come and serve on a jury. Like, we usually go, oh, because it's weighty. Instead of thinking the Bible like that, Think of that. The Bible is your roadmap to a thriving life. That's what reading the Bible is about. We live and love the Bible around here. We do. We, we live it. So we get in it. We see how God calls us to live, and we live it that way. And we love it so much. I love God's Word. I feel close to God when I read God's Word. We believe that God's Word is true, and it is relevant to our daily lives. It's amazing. I don't know how it is. It's just that God's Word is eternal. And so it is still relevant today, all these years later after it was written. We look for a life-changing encouragement, instruction, and wisdom in the Bible. And we make life choices based on, on biblical principles it guides us that's that's how like we know well i that's not an option for me that thing or that that invitation or that that option because i'm i'm living my life according to god's word the bible is your th roadmap to a thriving life three things you'll find in the bible first one you will find joy you will find joy do you need joy do you need joy in your life i need joy in my life we all need joy in our lives you find it in God's word. Psalm 119, 1 and, 1 and 2 says, Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all of their hearts. 
and I'm going to skip down to verse 143. As pressure and stress bear down on me, I find joy in your commands. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that so cool and so applicable to our lives right now? We have so much pressure and stress bearing down on us. And yet in the midst of all that, I find joy in your word, Lord. Oh, wow. Second thing you'll find, you will know how to live right. You'll find joy in the Bible. You will know how to live right. 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17 says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what's wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us to do what's right. God uses his word to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. That's what the Bible does. It teaches, it gives us joy, and it teaches us how to live right, and it shows us, Garen, you're getting off track, buddy. Get back on. And that's what God says to me through his word, and he said it to me this week multiple times. Our society's values morph. Has anyone figured that out? Like what was just assumed, no one would ever do that 20 years ago. It's like everyone's doing it today. What happened? The values morph and they change. There, There is a constant pull to get away with more than our parents got away with. There's a constant pull toward what feels good. And really, if, you, if you're paying any attention at all, you will know that the, the message of the media today is, if it feels good, you should be able to do it. Yep. That's ridiculous. Because <laughs> there's lots of stuff that feels good that is harmful. And it may feel good for a moment, but it ruins your life going forward. Don't do that. Don't just do what feels good. Do what's right so that you can have a thriving riverbank tree kind of life. Number three, you will stand strong in the storms of life. You will stand strong in the storms of life. Matthew 7, 24, at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, anyone who listens to my teaching, the Bible and follows it is wise. It's like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents, like this weekend, and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. And we've been talking about it. 2020 has been a season when the rains have come, the torrents have risen, the winds have beat, and on us, the winds of life, And I just thought for just one little moment, I just have to share a meme. I just love the 2020 memes. Can we just show that? (laughs) If Halloween candy were 2020. (laughs) Yep. (sighs) Not what you were hoping to, you know, to get at that door. (laughs) I love that. But, but through it all, you're trusting God through this crazy 2020 year, and you're trusting that he's going to work, cause everything to work together for your good. We are weathering the storms. Amen. We are believing for sunshine in our lives. Amen? We are. It's hard, but we're going through it with God. We're holding his hand, and we're going to make it through. And we're going to base our life on him, and we're going to stand strong in those, stir- in those storms of life. Our church is taking some serious steps forward in spite of everything that's going on around us. As I think back about this year and, you know, those memes, you know, we could just get sucked down and just be whine, whine, complain, complain uh, about, uh, you know, how awful 2020 is. But I started thinking about 2020 and what God's done in us as a church. And I realized, looking back, that our prayer ministry is the strongest it's ever been in 10 years right now. Our, our Wednesday night prayer gatherings are amazing. Sunday mornings, we are praying down heaven. Like, our prayer ministry is strong. And this was the year that we launched a live stream. We have talked about it off and on for 10 years. So in the hardest year ever, we finally launched live stream. And now, mom and dad, hi in Spokane. Hi to my friends in Kansas. Like, people now are all over the United States and all over the world can hear our ministry. Wow, that's awesome. Praise God. We're moving forward. We, we have new staff members. We are taking big steps toward relocating and relaunching uh, a brand new season of ministry. Man, we are blessed in the middle of 2020. 
And personally, I am blessed. We are blessed. We're going through the storms together with God. How do we know how to do that? The Bible is your roadmap to a thriving life. But I want to make this clear. You can try and try and try. You can struggle and struggle and struggle to do everything, every command, every rule, every legislation in the Bible. You can try so hard. You can work so hard to be joyful, to live right, and to stand strong. But you and I are not perfect. We're going to mess up. Our weaknesses are going to rise to the top at times. And it's going to show. I want you to know this. Jesus is your real joy. Jesus is your role model for living right. Jesus is your bedrock to build your life on so that you will stand strong in the storm. Jesus showed us how. Jesus paved the way. Jesus paid the price for all of that. So it's not even just in your striving and trying. It is in resting and relying on Jesus. Jesus, you give me the power to live right. Jesus, you give me the strength to stand in the storm. Jesus, you be the source of my joy. It's not just me, try, try, try. It's me and you resting in Jesus. I will lean back to the loving arms, right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to lean back into God. When you read the Bible, you are sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to what he taught. Because this is Jesus' word. Reading the Bible is not an interruption into your, busy, your best life. It's an invitation to your best life. It's the roadmap to your best life. If you're in the room, would you stand? And we're going to pray. And if you're online, you want to change your position, stand too. I think that's great. There's something powerful in just moving. It's like calls you to attention. Okay, I'm ready. I'm in. I'm listening. And I want to pray for you this morning. Could you bow your heads uh, right here in the room? And online, if you, if you want to give us a specific prayer request, you can just click on prayer on the website, and we can pray for you specifically for that. But I wonder how many of you would say with your heads bowed, I need joy despite difficult circumstances. Okay, my hand's up first. How many would say, Pastor, please pray for me. <laughs> I need joy despite difficult circumstances. There's just so much going on. Okay, you can put your hands down. Uh, how many of you would say, I want to live right despite temptations? Let me see your hand. My hand's up. I want to live right despite temptations, all kinds of temptations. Put your hands down. And finally, how many of you would say, I want to stand strong even though I'm going through a storm? Can I see your hand? I want to stand strong. I want to be standing on the other side of it, all through it and on the other side. Yeah. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word and I thank you for your encouragement you give us in your word, Lord God. And so, Lord, we know that your word says there is joy even when pressure and stress come down on us. There is joy in your word. And Lord, I pray for the joy of the Lord through the joy of your word to be flowing through our lives, Lord God. It doesn't make sense. It's not, I'm not asking for joy based on 2020. I'm asking for joy based on Jesus and your word. So Lord Jesus, I pray for a baptism of joy on everyone who's hearing this prayer today. Uh, Lord, and, and those who will hear it online in the future. Lord, I pray for a baptism of joy in you and from you. And Lord God, I pray for all those who are struggling. There, there is so much temptation. I, I read uh, somewhere an article this week that said, no matter how holy you are, no how, matter how far removed you are, there's temptation because the enemy is working over time. And so, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help each of us, Lord God, to stand strong in temptation. Lord God, I, I pray, Lord, that, that you would show us how, that you would help us to rely on your spirit and, uh, because it's tempting. We want to do it, Lord. We want to flare up in anger. We want to take a peek at that. We, we want to take a drink of that. Lord, there's so many temptations. I pray, Lord, you'd help us to rely on you and stand strong in you, Lord God, that this week, this time next week, we're still standing strong. Lord God, that is my prayer. And then, Lord, for all of us who are going through a storm, and that's 100% of us going through a storm right now, Lord, I pray that you'd be with us, that you would help us, and that, Lord God, even when the rains come, even when the winds blow, Lord God, that we would stand on your word, 
and that we, we would uh, be uh, so strong that people would notice and say, how are you doing it? And we could say, Jesus. Lord God, I pray for that. I pray that, that would mark us as a people. Lord, in Jesus' name. And one more prayer. I don't know if you've put your faith in Jesus yet, but I want to invite you to do that. All those promises, all those blessings, all that prosperity, it comes from following Jesus comes when your faith is in him and your, your life is built on his word. And so I want to invite you today, whether you're in, the, in person or online, uh, to put your faith in Jesus. How do you do that? Turn from your sin, turn your life over to God and let him lead. That's Jesus' message right there. That's the apostle's message. Turn from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead. Do you want to do that today? Maybe some of you for the first time, maybe some of you have been at, uh, at church for weeks and weeks or months and months or years and years, but you've never really done this. I want you to be regenerated in your heart, born again. And that's what happens when you put your faith in Jesus. Would you bow your heads one more time? If you want to make that decision today to put your faith in Jesus, give your life to him. Would you raise your hand right here in the room? Online too. All right, if you're making that decision today, I'd like to just coach you in a prayer. Would you pray after me? Jesus, Jesus. say aloud. Jesus, Jesus. I, invite I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you made that decision today, we say welcome to the family of God. May we give them some applause. Yes. And if you made that decision, would you fill out a Connect card on the website, whether you're here in the room or online, fill out a Connect card, and that will let me know. That's who, that's who it will, it will, you know, will alert. It will let me know you've made that decision, and we'll pray for you. All right? Thanks for being here today, everybody. an amazing message, Pastor Garen. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. The Bible is the roadmap to a thriving life. I'm going to remember that one. So um, right now it's time for Kids Church if you're watching online. So go ahead and just click Kids Church and that will get you connected. It's going to be great to, so you can dance with your kids and enjoy the Bible message with your kids. And make sure to like and subscribe if you're on right now to stay connected with our church. And if you did make that first time decision to follow Jesus, make sure you fill out a connect card at nfc.church, which is our website or on the app. And um, right now we have a really exciting meeting and all of you are invited. So we are picking out the name to our church. We're changing it from Northwest Family Church to something else. And we're gonna all brainstorm together in a meeting and come up with a new one. So that's um, right after church for about 20 to 30 minutes and we'd love to see you there. So happy Sunday and we'll see you next time. Bye.